In the meantime, let's have a look at some films with Van Connor, uh, the film critic. Van, good evening. Good evening, Petrino. It's always the bright spot of my week when I get to come on and chat to you on a Tuesday night, to be honest. Oh, you say that to all the girls. You say that to all the girls. I'm coming from a movie, so I'm usually having like a good (laughs) night. And then you're the cherry on top. The cherry on top of an already good night, I think. Yeah, all right. I'll believe you. And now, uh, tell me about the films you've chosen. Saltburn, I'm really interested in, but you've got another one called The Marvels. So, the Marvels, this was the big hit of the last week. So, this is the latest in the Marvel Cinematic Universe canon. This is, uh, this is a sequel to Captain Marvel from 2019, right. but it also follows on from the Disney Plus show Ms. Marvel. It involves a character from the Disney Plus show WandaVision, and it sort of references the events of the Disney Plus show Secret Invasion. Which right. already sounds I'm already incredibly confused. convoluted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's already really convoluted, and believe me, they somehow make this worse. Um, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> So the idea is you've got the three different uh, characters who have uh, powers like uh, Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, and Photon, and every time one of the uh, two of them use their powers at the same time, they swap places in space and time. And this coincides with the emergence of a new villain into the Marvel Universe who is seeking to rip holes in the fabric of reality in order to restore her fallen homeworld, which is a recurrent theme in this universe. But um, I've, I've got a clip for you. This is Tiana Paris's photon explaining all of what i've just said in i'm sure a lot clearer and more coherent a fashion (laughs) hi captain marvel it is so good to see you lieutenant trouble you too and it's captain rambo now right sorry So what's new? Where's my sister? Yeah. I'm thinking that our joint exposure to these unsteady jump points and our susceptibility to electromagnetic energy has temporarily entangled our world lines. Yeah, that right there. Uh... Entanglement? Our light powers are entangled, so we switch places whenever we use them at the same time. Which would mean Kamala... When did you get powers? I walked through a radiation shielding barrier of a witch hex, and now I can manipulate and see all wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. That happened to me. I did that. <laughs> I was like, there's, there's a line you hear every day, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I, that, I, 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 I just walked shield through a, yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. Um, okay, it sounds rubbish. Funny thing happened on the way of the forum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of those things. Um, yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm the OG Marvel fanboy. Like, I was day one for the first Iron Man. I've not missed one of these in since 2008. It's been like 15 years now. In 15 years, I've not missed one of these. I'm always the first guy there, and I'm always the first guy cheering them on. There have been some naff ones in the last few years, and I'm sad to say that this is one of them. Oh. It's not Thor, Love and Thunder bad, to be fair, but it is Thor, The Dark World bad. Which oh, that is- was bad. It, it, it's bad. It, I, that's still not Thor: Love and Thunder bad. This though, it just it lacks any kind of real emotional connection, despite the fact that it goes for all these big grand stakes, these big grand cosmic stakes that make you think of the Guardians of the Galaxy all the time, which was a film series entirely built on emotional connection. So which you I have loved. that. Dis- I love. Yeah, the you have that disparity there. You cared about those characters. Mm. You don't have that here, other than the fact that Iman Vellani absolutely steals every scene she's in as Ms. Marvel. Like she's the she's clearly like the young face of the MCU alongside Tom Holland's Peter Parker. We're gonna be seeing a lot of her and she's just wonderful and charismatic and very, very funny and I can't wait to see more of her. But she's I don't know, I don't think she's worth the movie on her own. It's uh, just not that involving. No. Sounds rubbish. What about Saltburn though? This this looks like it might be quite fun. Well, Saltburn is the ice cream sundae of my evening, to which you are the cherry on top, I'm <laughs> happy to say. So, uh, Saltburn is the new movie uh, from uh, writer-director Emerald Fennell, who previously brought us Promising Young Woman in, I want to say 2021, I think. I get confused about the, the awards years during COVID sometimes. Yeah. I think it was 2021 we got Promising Young Woman uh, with Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan does also have a very small role uh, in this as well, but it largely focuses on Barry Keown as uh, a university student at Oxford. He's uh, he's there on a scholarship. He's a bit of a loser. He's down his luck, and he befriends, sort of by chance, um, the cool rich kid at his in his particular Oxford college. Um, 
played by uh, Jacob Elordi. And uh, through various contrivances relating to uh, Barry Keegan's tragic home life, Barry Elordi invites him home to his his family manor of Saltburn. Because, you know, cause you know nothing, nothing could possibly be sinister about a place that has a name like Saltburn. No, no. Surely, yeah. He invites him home. Come, come back with us for, you know, the, the break <laughs> while we're on half term or whatever. He goes and he f- quickly finds himself drawn into this almost dangerous liaison-style Machiavellian Full on, just just Joan Collins in was it Dynasty level drama that is this absolutely absurd. This, this is the aristocracy dynamic. that's a bit nuts, isn't it? That you you just know that they're all going to be a bit batty. Kind of, but quiet. You don't know what to expect with that one, and I kind of love that about it. I've, I've got a clip for you that's about as spoiler-free as I can possibly make it, and this is uh, Barry Keown's Oliver meeting uh, Jacob Lordy's Felix, the rich kid, for the first time, and offering him his bike. Look, I'm not really going anywhere, just taking these back to the library. Take my bike. No, 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 I couldn't, I mean... I mean, it looks like rain. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want. Honestly, it. it's no big deal. I mean, I'll just get it from you later. You're my college, so. Am I? Yeah. That's kind. Are you serious? Hey, that is so kind. Thank you. I mean, are you sure? I mean, it's a bit of a faff wheeling you back to college. Oh, you. You want me to take yours oh, back? No, no, no. I just. I, I'm sorry. I just thought. I, I thought. I mean, I can wheel it back to college. It's. It's not that far. <laughs> I mean, it does sound great. I, I I like the look of it. I've seen a couple of clips of this. Is it a who it's done it? Good. Is it a is it a? It's 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 not a who done it really. Oh. It's it's. Uh... I don't know how to describe it because it is a mishmash of other concepts that have been have been brought together. Um, there's there's a, there's a, almost there's almost a little bit of a sort of dangerous liaisons uh, in, in there. Okay. There's, a, there's a little bit of sort of a, there's a, a sort of upstairs downstairs kind of a dynamic, a class draw in a manner. There's a, there's an almost a Downton quality to it, but there is this absurdist almost Sophia Coppola, Mary Antoinette. Thing running through it as well, and then at the centre of it all, you have Barry Keogh. Uh Barry Keogh, Barry Keogh. We all know who I mean. Yeah. He's incredible. He's the guy from Banshees, who's the Joker in the the Matt Reeves Batman. Um, um, he's amazing in this. And the final minute of this movie, I I think is either going to become the TikTok viral sensation of the next six months. The high point of Barry Keown's entire career, or both. <laughs> really? And if there's a, if, if there were a god in the universe, it would be what the clip they used when they put him up for best actor, because it's, it's brilliant. It's a wonderful sequence that you're never going to forget for a movie. It's just the perfect. But having said that, it, it just takes twists and turns. It's funny, it's absurd, it's dark, it's twisted, it's cruel, it's nasty. Um, it's absurdly horny in a way that movies aren't anymore. And I kind of respected that about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in. I, I like this energy. Like, I wish more movies did this. I wish yeah. more movies, just, you know, unbutton the top collar and went, okay, let's have some fun. <laughs> and this goes for it. Um, <laughs> It's, it's got that edge that I wish Promising... I mean, Promising Young Woman is a really, really good movie. But it stops at the point of giving you the the, the almost comic nihilism that you want it to have to, to reach its catharsis. This does not. This absolutely just dives in. And you know what? Fair play. I'm, I'm, I'm down. You have my money. Well played, Emerald. Well played. Yeah. Well, that sounds... I mean, that sounds brilliant. I love the look of it. Uh, and that's in cinemas now, isn't it? Is it 15? It is. Uh, so Saltburn is indeed a 15. That is, yeah, that's Saltburn is for Friday. Sorry, uh, the Marvels is already in cinemas. Oh, the Marvels already. We're not going to bother about that. Um, <laughs> just very quickly, because I think we've got a one minute, but um, the actor strike is officially over. So we're going to start to see production yeah. back in full swing. Uh, pr- production has already officially begun on some things. Like we, They had reshoots literally ready to go within 24 hours of the strike ending. I think it's Anyone But You starring uh, Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney that, that started doing reshoots. I think that's the first official thing to enter uh, filming. And things are being ramped up. Um, Super Bowl Sunday now looks like it's going to be the day that most US television series return. Uh, movies are starting to get put back into the schedule. Sad for Dune, because the strike ends 
ended the week before the original release date of Dune 2. You know, before they bumped it back to next year. So mm. the, the, there was a part of you that thought, can we not, can we not get Tim and Zendaya and everyone back on the carpet yeah. in a couple of days? Uh, well, we, look, we're going to see their faces again, and I'm going to see your face again soon. So good to speak to you, Van. Thank you very much indeed. Van Gogh, a film critic. Stay where you are, because it's over to you next.